think you wrote on page 82 and um, you asked the question, what is church? Mm. And I think this is where um, this book is steering to redefining certain terms which we grew up with. Mm. And you're right, we were church idolaters, deeply addicted to the institution. The church became our all-encompassing reality. The church gave us a purpose in life. The church provided us with a salary. The church was our life. And like all idols, it drained the life out of us. Mm. We wrongly believed that we had to grow the church. And in our minds, a big church meant success and a small church signif- signified irrelevance. Success became our driving narrative. Mm. I can't tell you how many people, uh, in actual fact, my brother is in America now, but just before he left, we had a conversation of how many people I know that is not part of a church community, mm. yet they deem themselves to be Christian, but in some way or the other, they became disillusioned with church. Mm. And something that is greatly valuable of this book is it speaks to the heart of the disillusioned Mm. and i'll be honest with you i I think you need to be part of church just for a while before you realize god truly calls broken people Mm. and um, i always say to people if you've not been heard in church just stick around a little while Mm. but what do we say to the disillusioned and Mm. when we speak about raw spirituality is there a place for people to return to a communal setting where they can rediscover that vigor mm. for the life of Jesus. Because what motivates community mm. is our picture of God and how it impacts the brother mm. that we live together with. Mm. Uh, well, how do we speak? And how, what would you say to the individuals that are watching this today and they are totally disillusioned with Christianity, mm. they love Jesus, but man, mm. they dislike the church. Mm. What would you say to people like that? Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a major uh, question, Rolf. Uh, the statistics at the moment uh, worldwide is becoming overwhelming that mm. Christians disengage from uh, formal church settings because yes. of hurt. There's even a category for them now. I think it's called nuns. Mm. Um, I think I think uh, let me just give a bit context of that quote you read. Mm. I wrote that as a pastor who burnt out working at a church myself and and came to the conclusion that the concept of church became all encompassing. Yeah. And uh, the reason why I call that uh, uh, idol is that it really became the central part of my own journey. And, and I think a lot of people that are hurt by church, um, some of, and, uh, let me not say a lot of them, some of them, uh, I think, are invited to move beyond their critique of church mm. and to start to shift the question to, okay, what does it mean to actually follow Jesus? Yeah, very good. Um, so my own ecclesiology uh, shifted the moment I shifted the attention directly on what is church, the question. I think as a primary question, what is church? Or uh, well, let me say it this way. If what is church is the primary and first question, I think we make category mistakes. Mm. We set ourselves up for something that's not helpful because yeah. God builds God's church. And the question preceding that is actually what does it mean to be, f- be followers of Christ? So, uh, you know, when, when we planted uh, the church, Claypot Community, that, that I narrate the story of in Raw Spirituality, uh, you know, in the beginning few months, we asked that question. So what is church? And our questions mostly fizzled out to, yeah, but we don't like this, and this is really bad, and this is bad, and we don't like this. And one of my mentors, uh, who who has now deceased since then, said to me in a letter, uh, maybe it would be helpful if you shift the question. (laughs) Maybe rather ask, what does it mean to follow God? So my own thoughts, you know, for people that are disengaged is that sometimes focusing on that can become a, a way of, of actually not living into what it means to be a disciple because you can become a professional critiquer. Yeah, for sure. Um, That being said, there are people that have legitimately been hurt by the church. Spiritual abuse in churches is real. Mm. There are dynamics that's really destructive. Um, 
the Roman Catholic Church are being caught out uh, in the last decade or so, but I think what we are seeing worldwide with the Me Too movement in the states that have flowed into church congregations, it's obvious that the Protestant church I is not standing in front of the ecclesial community with unwashed hands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people are in very abusive church structures and, and those uh, places are not places of safety because, mm. uh, you know, there's not accountability. Yeah, for sure. So th I think there's a group of people that are not professional critiquers that have really been hurt mm -hmm. and been taken advantage of. And then there's another group, I alluded to them before, I think they, um, you know, they fall into the I'm religious or spiritual but not religious category. Yeah, for and, sure. And uh, I said to my wife a few weeks ago, I think we are now in South Africa, in, in my Afrikaner tribe, in the first time in a phase that I could legitimately say that we're moving into a secular age, that we have mm -hmm. kids that have not grown up with any, you know, Christian imagination. Christendom is really busy falling. And some of those people are being raised in the atmosphere of I'm um, spiritual but not religious. Mm. But at some point, the energy of their spirituality fizzles inward and out, basically. Mm. And I, I suspect that c church communities that are honestly grappling with how to translate the tradition, capital T, uh, will grow because yeah, they, sure. they, people will be attracted to that. I yeah, agree. so it's a bit of a long-winded answer. No, 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 it's 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 yeah. perfect because ultimately I think the question is always how do we integrate people back into community? And I know that some churches have focused on seeker sensitive services. Mm. Some people have willfully strategized to get a specific medium or people back into their congregation. Mm. I can remember one of the churches I pastored, I can remember the one morning I walked into the church offices and the pastor drew a line on a chalkboard and he said to me, what are you, managers or pastors? And mm. we were like, pastors. And he says, no, you're managers. Oh my goodness. And yeah. the fun fact was that we didn't pastor people, we managed people. Mm. And if you manage people, what do you do? First of all, you look at the bottom line of what that individual gives. So the one that has the highest priority in your zone is usually the one that tithes the most because he's going to secure mm. that financial income that you need to generate mm. for that zone per month. Communities-wise, why is there a, a, a disinterest from the younger generation? There's definitely a significant interest in spirituality. We can see it in the movies mm. that are being made. There's a curiosity right over the world towards something greater, spiritual, some superpowers, mm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How can the church feed that, and how can the church become relevant in a context like that without losing focus mm. of what you've written when you speak about the revelation of this Jesus Christ that makes the one true God known? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, Rudolf, that's a great question. Um, I think if I might, might be so presumptuous, I think sometimes our, our category mistake starts even with asking the question. Yeah. yeah if, we, if we start to ask how can the church be relevant, mm. um, we're focusing in a very subtle way back on ourselves again. Um, I, think, I think part of the, the, the question communities are standing for is what is God up to in our neighborhood yes um, what is what is God up to here in our community of faith and I think once we start to live into the adventure of mm. joining God in that mission uh, people will be attracted the the problem comes when we start to as you said you know uh, start to uh, um, point out specific groups in a community so i you know i'm differing a bit now from the international conversation but my facebook feed is filled with questions like how can we bring millennials back into the church yeah. um, if we focus on them you know what we're doing is we're we're using um you know target mechanisms uh, uh, you know uh, target audiences and and I think subtly we can shift again the the attention of a community away. So, in in that sense, uh, there was a British theologian that I really loved, uh, uh, Leslie Newbegin, and Newbegin said, you know, the greatest hermeneutic of of God's love is a community that is actually living into this mission of God. Sure. 
and and you know that thing doesn't have an age category on it mm. um, what I'm suspecting is that uh, there will be a movement back into the importance of locality where the churches are placed um, the, I think the 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 question of parishes will become more important mm. that churches that are not uh, a blessing within the geographical area where they're at if they are not living out god's mission in those communities i think this the the group that says we are you know religious but not uh, or spiritual but, but not, not religious, religious. Yeah. you know they're going to say Ugh, you know i can go to a nicer concert than what you're going to bring with your disco lights and your funky <laughs> yeah. worship music you and know? your smoke screens exactly yeah. so but that's that's my thing so uh, or my thoughts you mm, know i mm. think i think the church can be relevant if we use that in the sense of how are we apprentice to the mission of god within our neighborhood absolutely uh, yeah yeah and i think the question on page 107 you speak about the mission day and you highlight the reality that ultimately the church is just an extension of god's missional nature mm. and i love that i think mm. i think that is spot on and what I've seen in the past is, is that church has become a little bit anthropocentric. So it's mm. focused on how can we get people back to to the church. Mm. But you've just spoken about it and you said we need to come from the other way around. Mm. We need to ask God, Lord, what is your mission in this community? And mm. that will in itself, mm. by its own nature, draw people into the church mm. or into the church community.